Okay, student, let's see what is there in this question. A planet orbits sun in an elliptical orbit moving in the direction as shown. Okay, at the position shown, which quantity is decreasing for the planet? So what is decreasing for the planet? It's a very interesting question. We would be learning it uh, for, from all of the options point of view and it will clear so many concepts. So the number one concept that we are going to discuss here is the first law of Kepler's, like Kepler's first law. So Kepler's first law is that all the planets, when they move around the sun or when they move around any star, the orbit is always elliptical as shown in the diagram there. It means the first law, Kepler's first law is applicable here. No problem with that. And we have understood that very good. So the orbit is elliptical. So now moving next, I would be going to the second law also, but wait a minute. Let's go for the options. What do you think? Is the acceleration decreasing? Now acceleration is always directly proportional to force. More is the force, more will be the acceleration. Lesser is the force, lesser will be the acceleration. Now, as the planet moves around this in this direction, it means that the distance between sun and the planet is gradually reducing. And as it is reducing, the force is increasing because of the Newton's gravitational law, which says it is inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them. So if R is reducing, force is increasing. It means that with time, acceleration will be decreasing. Do not be confused because it is an elliptical path. It is not a circular path and all that. We are not going to get into those troubles. We are only understanding in which direction there is the force. So force is going towards the sun and it is increasing. So acceleration is towards the sun. Clear. So it means that acceleration will be increasing. And hence, that is not the correct answer. Let's go for the B option, which is angular momentum. <coughs> So angular momentum, like as we know, we have done it in A4 now, angular momentum remains constant until and unless an external torque is acting on the system. So is there any external torque acting on it? Is somebody pushing the planet around in a circular fashion? No, there is nobody doing that. So there is no external torque. If there is no external torque, the angular momentum will be constant. So angular momentum is constant in a planetary motion. What is angular momentum for this case? We know it from A4 when we learned about moment of inertia. Angular momentum for this, we can take it as MVR. So clearly, if this is constant, you see V and R is constant. What do you mean by that? More is the distance between sun and the planet. Lesser becomes the speed of the planet. And lesser is the distance, more becomes the speed of the planet. Which means that at this point, which is known as aphelion or apogee in many cases, the velocity will be very less. But this point, which is called perigee or perihelion, the velocity will be far more than what it was at aphelion. But the distance now is lesser and earlier the distance was bigger. This is what is the angular momentum. And why is that? Because there is no external torque. Our condition is valid. Torque is equal to dl by dt. Now the torque is zero, which means that the angular momentum is constant. So this is it. everything for angular momentum in just few words, I would say. So here the velocity is lesser. Here the velocity is more. Angular momentum remains constant. It is not decreasing. So even B is wrong. Let's go for the next option, kinetic energy. And the final option is potential energy. It means we have to think from the point of view of energies now. So if we talk about energies now, potential energy in gravitation, it is always negative and it is given by this formula. It is always negative. Remember, always negative. Well, it might be positive in the case of electrostatics that we are going to do when there are charges involved. It is positive, it is zero, it is negative. But in the case of gravitational field, it is always negative. Now, potential energy is negative GMM by R. The distance is clearly reducing. If the distance is reducing, so the magnitude of GM by R is increasing, but the negative sign is here. It means as the radius decreases, the potential energy becomes more negative. It is becoming more negative. It means it is reducing. So potential energy is 
decreasing. So D will be the correct answer because we want to find a physical quantity which is decreasing. But what about the kinetic energy? In the angular momentum only, I told you that the velocity here will be more and the velocity here will be lesser. Clearly, the kinetic energy is maximum at perihelion point. So kinetic energy is going to increase. So even this is wrong answer, but the gravitational potential energy is going to decrease. Now, do you know what is the formula for the kinetic energy, by the way? Let me have this opportunity to tell you that also here. It is GMM divided by 2R, but it is positive. So for kinetic energy, it is indirectly proportional to R, just like the potential energy, but potential energy is negative. The magnitude is increasing for both kinetic as well as potential energy, but potential energy is becoming more negative because it was negative. Kinetic energy was positive and it is becoming more positive. So we can clearly say that yes, kinetic energy is increasing. This is it. Let us have some words about the second Kepler's law now. So second Kepler law says that the velocity of the planet when it is farther away is lesser and when it is near, it is more. But how do it, how do it says? It, it says in a very different manner. It says that the position vector of the planet with respect to sun, this is the planet and this is the sun. So this is the position vector. It is a sweeping the same amount of area in the same time. So when it is at this position, it has to sweep the same area. So obviously it is covering a bigger distance. I repeat, in the same time, it is covering same area. So this area is equal to this area. A1 is equal to A2 and the time is also equal but because area is the same it means that here the distance traveled will be lesser here the distance traveled will be more so we can say that the velocity of the planet at that point will be more and the other point it will be lesser now you might say that we already discussed that because we discussed that in the angular momentum so actually the second law of kepler's second law is integrally connected with angular momentum. We can derive the second law <clears throat> with the help of angular momentum. Okay, so they are technically the same things, but in the terms of what Kepler has said, that the area, the aerial velocity is the same, isn't it? So the aerial velocity of the, of the position vector is the same, but it can be derived from our condition that the angular momentum is constant. Okay, dear students, so that's it. So the answer for us will be D and according to the mark scheme also the answer is D. This is Professor Varun. Thanks for watching the video. Please join the YouTube channel if you want to watch all the lectures on these things. All the best.